What's up, family? I literally cannot believe that it's already the end of 2018. Like, this year felt like it flew by and also lasted a decade at the very same time. Anyone else feel me on that one? For the past few years, every time New Year's rolls around, I cannot not think about this one New Year's Eve that was literally the craziest New Year's Eve of my life so far. This is a story time about one of the craziest, most incredible, to this day still cannot believe that happened type of New Year's Eve that I've experienced in my life so far. Like, literally like a dream and could not believe that it even happened. It was 2015, around this time obviously, like duh. I was home for the holidays and of course a ton of people that I knew from like high school and college were also home visiting and it was nice. So I didn't really have plans for New Year's Eve. Like honestly, the way that I most prefer spending my New Year's Eve is with family. I always like starting a new year with loved ones and the people that I care about the most and I know that I could never go wrong or regret spending a New Year's Eve with family. So that's always really important to me and I'm always super content with that no matter what we do. So this year wasn't any different. I didn't have anything planned. I knew that I was going to be spending it with my family. I hadn't, I hadn't seen them in a minute so I was really looking forward to it. I guess my night started off around like 8 p.m. or whatever we're like at home sitting in the living room and it was literally like just me and my fam and as per tradition of course we had it on dick clark's new year's eve like whatever that program is that everybody universally watches in america on new year's eve so <laughs> right right though we were watching that and i remember i was sitting there looking at the screen and literally making a comment to my parents like wow the decorations that they picked for this year are really interesting like nivea was sponsoring that year so it was a sea of blue hats and blue like balloon things you know they're like waving around and stuff and i remember it was like blue hats with like a white kiss mark on them and stuff so i told my parents like oh wow like look at that sea of blue like nivea really dished it out this year <laughs> We're like sitting there watching and stuff. Obviously, like time to kill. It was like several hours before it was time to like ring ring in the new year and everything. One of my good friends from high school was also in town. I hadn't seen her in forever. So I was like, hey, like you wanna catch up? You wanna like meet up right now and stuff? And she was like, yeah, for sure. Like I'm down, like I'm bored as hell. Like <laughs> let's do something. And so we just basically decided what's the one place that's gonna be open in our hometown right now? IHOP. So let's go get tea at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> really really edgy stuff here people we live life on the edge crazy ass party animals blasting me all around you know the usual she comes over to my house picks me up we drive over to ihop we get there and are immediately confronted with the realization that oh wait our entire hometown is a ghost town tonight and even ihop is closed when IHOP is closed, that's when you know shit is shut the F down. So we're sitting there in the parking lot. I'm nowhere near defeated though. We're like looking at each other, thinking about what else to do. And I just, I just put it out there. You know, I just release the idea into the world. I like, you know, release it into the universe. I don't know where this idea came from. I don't know how it popped into my head, but it just, it did suddenly. I just looked at her and I was like, Her what reaction if we just went as to any York right now. reaction would be, um, what the f are you crazy? At this point, it's literally 10 o'clock at night on New Year's Eve. Now, mind you, to me, it was like a very casual suggestion because in our hometown, from the bus station straight into Port Authority it takes less than an hour. And on a night where there's like literally no traffic, it can take even shorter than that. So I guess she was hearing me a bit and she was like, okay, yeah, man, you sure? Like our bus is even running right now? Look up the bus schedule, and the last bus was leaving in 10 minutes. And where were we? Exactly 10 minutes away from the bus station. So if we were going to do it, it couldn't really require any thought of if it was a logical decision or not. We literally were just like, let's book it. So she hit the pedal to the metal, and we fed our asses over to the bus station and as we were pulling in we literally saw the last bus of the night already pulled up and passengers coming on and everything and so she swerved into whatever open parking spot that she could and as she was parking before she even finished hitting the brakes i already jumped out of the car and was running over to the bus to alert the driver that i was there my friend was coming to join me and we made it we caught the last bus into new york city 
on New Year's Eve after 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, you might call it crazy. I call it living life, man. That's just my philosophy, right? Like, if you live in close proximity of all the action, why wouldn't you just go to where all the action is? Like, it never made sense to me when people would like come up with excuses or say something like, oh, it's like so far away and stuff. Bro, there are people on the other side of the world that wish at one time in their entire lives to be able to come to New York City, let alone on New Year's Eve. Like, why wouldn't we? We're literally right there, right? That's just how I feel. I don't know. It's literally super effing privileged and that's the point. It's like we have access to this privilege. It's right in front of us. Like, how can we possibly take it for granted, you know? So, my friend and I head to New York City and of course, on the bus ride there, the entire time we're literally like giggling, laughing our asses off, looking at each other like we cannot believe we're actually doing this right now. And keep in mind, my Muslim Arab parents are still at home in the living room expecting me to like come home from tea at IHOP any moment. Like, <laughs> have absolutely no idea what's going on right now. Absolutely no idea that their daughter was like actually headed to New York City. By the time we get to New York City, it's a little bit past 11. And it's literally mayhem like New Yorkers are notoriously known for wanting to avoid like Times Square and anywhere anywhere where there's like large touristy crowded populations and groups of people and stuff like that Port Authority on New Year's Eve in New York City is like a seventh circle of hell for some people there were cops and people everywhere and so many checkpoints and like yellow tape everywhere because like to get to Times Square where the crystal ball was happening you needed the ticket you needed the badge you needed to have access to it right so everything was taped off like you couldn't get closer to Times Square or anything like that basically if you're at Port Authority the only direction you could go is downtown you could not go anywhere near Times Square because it was completely blocked off and every checkpoint was a was a police checkpoint like it was literally cops everywhere like checking everything keep an eye on everyone whatever all right like what should we do now like we're in new york we're literally in the middle of midtown so we joined the massive herd of people that are also migrating downtown <laughs> because there's nowhere else to go to the avenue to the side of port authority you just see like herds of people walking down because that's literally the only open road you know what i mean like everything else is completely taped off and stuff all right like let's go find somewhere to get that tea and like post up and amongst like all the energy and the people and stuff like let's go let's go chill somewhere and as we're walking i overhear a cop with a really thick russian accent talking to two girls i suck at imitating russian accents so i'm not even gonna try because i ain't trying to offend people and it's just the world doesn't need to hear my attempt at imitating a russian accent so basically what i overhear him saying is oh yeah Times square is like all the way that way and there's no way you're, you're gonna be able to get there right now um and so i <laughs> I don't know what crossed my mind or like what I was thinking or expecting and stuff, but I just was like Hey <laughs> I like turned around from my friend for a second walked back over to the officer where he was standing with those two girls Acting like this like clueless little tourist or something and I was like, oh Times Square My friend and I are actually trying to get there too, but we don't know how <laughs> Oh my god, okay. And the second I said that, I don't know what came over the cop at that point. I guess he like suddenly was feeling himself that four young women were like crowded around him, like needing his help or his guidance or whatever. Because for one second he pauses and he just like looks around at us and he goes, You ladies are trying to get to Times Square? Alright, follow me. And we start following this cop and he starts leading us back towards where we came from in the direction of Times Square. So <laughs> quietly like walking behind him and stuff like not knowing what to expect, not knowing what's gonna happen. And then we get back to the first checkpoint, right? And literally it's like blocked off, cops are there. The very few people that are squeezing through are the ones with their like really expensive ass badges and stuff. And then the cop that we're with, like our boy, he walks in front of us and he tells his colleague, his, his fellow cop friends, he goes, oh yes, these women are with me. Okay, see so like that brief ass attempts at a Russian accent just kind of sounded like my Arab dad so yeah that's why we're not gonna do this but yeah he literally like tells the cop at the checkpoint like all these women are with me and we literally walk straight in behind him no questions asked we get to the next checkpoint the next checkpoint is even more crowded there's like literally a group of people in front of it that are like blocked off nobody can get through and stuff and this cop parts the sea like Moses and walks us straight through the people and goes up to the cop and again says 
one, two, three, four, these women are all with me. They let us through. Checkpoint after checkpoint, and then we finally get to like the avenue that leads straight to Times Square, right? Keep in mind, it's like 11.30 p.m. at this point on New Year's Eve, and my friend and I just got to New York City maybe 10 or 15 minutes prior to all of this going down, okay? So we take us to this avenue, like one block away from like where Times Square is, right? As soon as we cross the street, on this side of the avenue is literally shoulder to shoulder masses of people. I guess like the people that are there to see the crystal ball and stuff. It's so crowded in Times Square that literally a line formed an avenue long of people shoulder to shoulder trying to like get as close as possible i guess or like i don't even know what they're waiting for i guess to like pass through whatever whatever and you all know how new year's eve goes like new year's eve in new york city people get there at like six o'clock in the morning if not days before to wait like post up get as close as possible to the ball and like they literally just wait until midnight for dozens of hours dozens and dozens of hours i literally heard that people like piss on themselves and stuff like while they're waiting it's excruciatingly uncomfortable especially with like the typically cold ass weather in new york city in the dead of, in the dead of december and on top of that they dished out tons of money to be able to get there right so the fact that like we were already like in such close proximity so effortlessly randomly spontaneously unplanned was just absolutely mind-blowing, okay? So we see this large line of people on the other side of the avenue, like this sidewalk, it's completely empty because this part of the avenue was blocked off just for cops to like come and go, like literally just like personnel, like whatever. And of course, our brilliant new friend does what? He escorts us straight down the cop lane. And to be honest with you, I feel like this cop was like enjoying his time just as much, if not more, as we were because he literally was just like playing it up and indulging in it and stuff. Like as he's walking us through, he's pointing out across the street to that line of people and he goes, you see all those people? Yeah, all those people have to wait. Us? We don't have to wait. <laughs> you guys are with me! Like, yes sir, we are so with you. Like. We are with you, man. <laughs> it was just, it was so absurd. And then, within a matter of moments, we step into all of Times Square right before us. And that sea of blue hats and balloons that I was watching in my living room, in my family's home, I was suddenly in it. And I was looking around like confused, like I was trying to orient myself, like I had never seen Times Square in this condition before, right? So I was like, where what part are we like where's the crystal ball and then the cop goes look up and i look up and lo and behold we're standing directly underneath it literally like front row not even front row because we weren't even like with the groups of people we we're on the other side of the fence that they were all like packed behind you know oh my god it, it was just wild. So then he's like, well, do you guys want to go to the stage? Like, I'm sure you want to be close to the stage, like, where all the performances are happening, right? And my friend and I just look at each other and we're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so then the cop literally escorts us right to the front of the stage. Who was performing when we got there? There were, like, a ton of performers. Like, it was really crazy. But what I do remember is that we were standing right in front of like where the people leave the stage and there's always like this one building in Times Square like I don't know what it is I don't know if it's like the stock exchange building or what but there's like this one building where, like the top of it is a uh, kind of like a bar that overlooks all of Times Square all the celebrities and the VIPs and stuff that are there for like the Clark's New Year's Eve they always like go up there like that's where they hang out and I remember like within a couple of minutes of us getting there Miley Cyrus finishing her performance and just like walking past us and like going up there and everyone was just like click 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 like oh my god Miley, ah. my friend and i were just like we were just planning on getting tea at ihop by the time we got there we only had to wait like 15 to 30 minutes until midnight for like for the ball to drop like it was literally nothing got to enjoy like these performances and got to like be amongst the people and stuff and you know while i was out there in the crowd waiting for the ball to drop your girl was calling up her parents back in jersey <laughs> and letting them know like hey mom and dad they're like hey like where are you like we've been waiting for you like are you coming back um i'm actually like in times square right now <laughs> 
<laughs> and I just remember, I just remember like listening to my mom trying to explain to my dad from the other end of the phone line, like, she says she's in Times Square right now, like, no, nah. Times Square, what? Are you serious? Like, how, what? I feel like they might have been, like, briefly confused, but at that point, like, by then, my parents had already come to accept that I was gonna come to them with, like, crazy-ass shit, and nothing is, like, a surprise to them anymore, you know what I mean? Like, they're just like, all right, I guess the Manny is spending New Year's Eve in Times Square under the crystal ball, you know? <laughs> what a crazy-ass New Year's Eve, like... And then when the countdown started, it was just magical. Like just the excitement, the energy, like everyone bringing in the near together. Like it really does feel magical there, you know? It's just like, it's beautiful. I knew the crystal ball fell and stuff, but like to actually witness it in person. Hey, Amani, it's like literally falling right in front of you right now. I feel really blessed, really lucky, really grateful to have had that memory and enjoyed that experience so much. Like it was literally the most perfect, most ideal way to ever experience New Year's Eve in New York. Like I, if I had written it, I could not have written that better. Like, thank God, alhamdulillah. On top of it all, I just remember it being accentuated by some negativity from my friend. And I don't say that to throw any shade or any way to like reflect poorly on her. I remember she was going through a really hard time at that Point in her life and while i'm sure that memory was just as significant and special and, and miraculous for her as it was for me i just remember in the moment that that negativity kind of was like coming out you know as we were waiting for the countdown to start because it was so dead ass freezing cold in new york that night that all she was doing while she was standing next to me was complaining about how cold it was and like oh my god when is this fall gonna drop like <laughs> Oh my god, what time is it? How much longer do we have to wait? When is this thing gonna drop? Like, blah blah blah. And I remember looking over at her like, Girl, do you realize what we are bearing witness to right now? What just happened? Like, what we're experiencing? Like, are you kidding me? It's just a good little, like, reminder or footnote to that experience that really your outlook on life is everything, right? Like, you could be in the most magical moment and still feel that it's like negative or like not the best or whatever and you could be in a really negative like bad moment in your life and still feel really happy and vibrant and you know positive about it and stuff it really is all about the outlook amani are you serious can you never just end a video without having to come up with some type of like moral lesson or whatever no wishing you a 2019 filled with badassery fearlessness and going for whatever the you want without any hesitation as always make sure to like comment and subscribe stay real stay hustling and stay popping